What is up everyone? Welcome to Investing Club. In this video, I'm going to address Jeremy from Financial Education's recent video on why buying Tesla now is like buying Amazon back in 2008 and why I think he's wrong and why I see a very clear difference between Amazon in 2008 and Tesla right now. So before we start the video, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor and there's no hate on Jeremy for this video. He is someone who genuinely believes in Tesla and that's okay if you wanna believe them. I've been critical about Tesla on a couple of my videos, but that is just my opinion and like always, I could be wrong. So a couple of days ago, Jeremy posted a video and responded to people calling Tesla stock a bubble. And first we have to talk about his bullish thesis on the stock. This is what made Jeremy throw a huge amount of his portfolio in the Tesla stock. So I was driving around one day and there I saw it, a Tesla. I saw one Tesla on the road and then I had an epiphany. Tesla is going to rule the world. I have to buy Tesla because I saw one Tesla on the road and I just knew in that moment, I knew when I saw that one Tesla that I have to invest in it. And it's only going to be a matter of time before everyone in the world drives a Tesla. So I just thought that was sort of funny, pretty bulletproof thesis there, I think. So anyway, let's get into the specifics on what Jeremy says between Tesla stock and Amazon stock. So first, Jeremy says, you can't be concerned about Tesla's earnings in the next year, the next two years, the next three years, because what you're really looking forward to is the future, 10, 20 years down the line. And this is something I agree with. With stocks that are reinvesting their profits like Amazon and Tesla, it doesn't make sense to look at their earnings because earnings aren't gonna reflect the money that they're reinvesting back into the business. But then Jeremy goes on to say, look at Amazon, look what Amazon has done. Amazon always trades at a PE ratio of 50, 60, up to 100 sometimes and look at what the stock has done. It's gone up 28 times. And this is what Jeremy says Tesla could do too. They say Tesla could go up as much as Amazon, even though they're not making any profits, but because of the growth that they have behind them. And so while I agree that you can't look at price to earnings with stocks like Tesla and Amazon, you have to look at something. There has to be something you can point to and say, this is what this company is worth. And for Tesla right now, all it seems like it is, is car deliveries where the stock jumps 20% after they beat car deliveries by 20,000. That's just a sign that Tesla hasn't done anything yet. If Tesla was a real established company, people wouldn't be caring about how many cars Tesla has delivered. And the fact that everyone still focuses so much on that shows how far Tesla has to go. So like I said at the beginning of this video, even in 2008, there's a major difference between a stock like Amazon and Tesla right now in 2020. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that is. So here's the graph of Amazon. And like everyone knows, you can't value Amazon based on their PE ratio. I, it shows right here the normal PE is 131 times, which obviously doesn't make any sense. But there has to be something. There's something that investors are looking at that has made the price of Amazon go up 28 times in the past 10 years. And after a little digging, it's pretty easy to see that the answer to that is Amazon's operating cash flows. So we can take a look, so we can switch to their operating cash flows and see what that looks like when it's matched up with the chart of Amazon stock price. And here you go, you can see it's almost a perfect correlation that Amazon, at least since around 2010, has been trading at around 26 times their operating cash flow. And there's a major difference between operating cash flow and earnings. Obviously, companies like Amazon aren't going to have super high earnings compared to their price because they're reinvesting all of their profits back into the business. But operating cash flow is something you expect to see with these high growth companies because operating cash flow is just the cash that they're bringing in from their operating business. As Amazon grows, it doesn't matter how much they're investing into growing, you expect that the amount of cash that they bring in is gonna be increasing every year. And since you know this now, since you know that Amazon has been valued at 26 times cash flow, this allows you to find what's called a fair value for Amazon. You can look at this and you can say, okay, based on this last 10 years of information, that's where you can value Amazon at 26 times cash flow, which right now would be at around $2,415. So now let's look at what Amazon was doing back in 2008 because that's what Jeremy says. Tesla now is like Amazon in 2008. So we can shrink this graph all the way down. We'll, we'll shrink it down to 2010 to see what's going on. The point I'm trying to make here is that Amazon was increasing their operating cash flows since 2002. So by the time 2008 came along, Amazon had six years of history where they were making more cash every single year. Even in this short time frame, the price of Amazon follows along with that operating cash flow. As the cash flow is going up, so is Amazon's stock price. And this is before Amazon was as crazily valued as it is now. In 2008, you could have bought Amazon for 11 times their operating cash flow, which is less than half of what their normal valuation has been now. So that just goes to show you Amazon had a history at 2008. By that point, they already had six years where they could show investors, look, we can bring in more and more cash every year. And that really validated Amazon's business model. At this point, they have a clear business and a clear way to make money. So another thing you can take a look at with these high growth companies is EBITDA per share. EBITDA is just earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, 
and amortization. And something like EBITDA is gonna give you a better picture than normal earnings because it takes out all of the reinvestment that high growth companies like Amazon put back into their business. And it just shows you the earnings before they do all of that. From this chart, you can see it's almost perfectly correlated with Amazon stock price. Amazon has been trading at around 40 times EBITDA since 2002, 2003. And again, we can shrink the graph down to see what it really looks like back during that time period. And here's what you see, the growth rate for EBITDA from Amazon from 2002 to 2008 was awesome, right? This thing was growing like crazy. And what you can see is the price of Amazon goes along that trend. If EBITDA is going up, the price of Amazon's going up. And you could have bought Amazon at around 16 times EBITDA back in 2008. So that's what I'm trying to point out here. By 2008, Amazon had a clear history of generating cash flow and generating earnings. So when you look at things this way, Amazon isn't always as overvalued as everyone says. Everyone uses the argument for any growth stock. Look at Amazon. Amazon's always had a PE ratio of 100, but it keeps going up every year. So the key is just don't look at price to earnings. Look at these other metrics that will give you a better picture of how growth stocks operate and are valued. So now with these two pieces of information, we can go and look at Tesla and see what they've done so far and how that compares to Amazon in 2008. So here's Tesla right now and here's their operating cash flow. And from their history, it's very obvious, Tesla has had two years of positive operating cash flow. Before 2018, they were not generating any positive cash flow from their operations. In 2018 and 2019 they were, so that gives us a two year history for Tesla making positive cash flow. And that's a good start, even though Amazon in 2008 had six years, Tesla has two years, which doesn't really prove much. I'd like to see a longer time frame of proven success, but two years is a good start. But here's the problem with Tesla. The difference between Amazon and Tesla is that Amazon was still fairly valued after six years of consistent increasing cash flow. With Tesla, after the second year, the price has already gone up way too much where it doesn't even make sense to invest in them anymore. Like we saw back in 2008, you could have bought Amazon for around 15 times their operating cash flow. And what is Tesla at right now? Tesla's at 80 times operating cash flow. So this is a case of yes, Tesla's trending in the right direction, but their stock price has already gone up way too much to justify buying anywhere near these prices. So in my opinion, that's the main difference between Amazon in 2008 and Tesla right now. Back in 2008, you could have bought Amazon with six years of a track record of increasing their cash flows with a reasonable expectation that that will increase into the future at those same growth rates. And you could have bought them at an attractive price back in 2008 under 15 times cash flows. With Tesla, you don't have that track record. You have two years of positive cash flows, which is a good start, but by the time that's happened, the valuation of Tesla has ballooned so much that it makes no sense to buy anymore at the valuation they're at. And so right now, everyone investing in Tesla at anywhere near these prices are investing on hope. They're not investing based on historical evidence they expect will continue. They're investing based on what they hope Tesla can become. And that's not something I like to do. I don't like to invest on hope. And I don't think investing on hope is ever a good idea. Most of the time it ends up losing people a lot of money. So those are my thoughts on why I think Jeremy's wrong on the comparison between Tesla now and Amazon back when they were starting in 2008. So in my opinion, if Tesla got back down to a more reasonable price, maybe it would make sense to buy some. If they got back down to 15 times cash flows at around $200, maybe they could make a good buy then and you could see a good return from that going forward. But right now at 80 times cash flows, it makes no sense. It doesn't matter how fast Tesla is gonna grow. There's no way to justify this valuation. So again, this is all just my opinion. And like always, I could be wrong. So let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you think I am wrong and why. For what reason is Tesla similar to investing in Amazon 2008? I'd love to hear what you think and if you even think that comparison at all is fair. And the last thing I wanna say is if you wanna invest in Tesla, it's fine. You can invest in Tesla. I'm not saying you can't invest in a company like this, but what I am saying is that at this point, Tesla is still a speculation. They have no history to go off of. And because of that, they shouldn't make up a huge percentage of your portfolio where you have people like Jeremy from Financial Education, no hate on him, but when he has 30% of his portfolio in Tesla stock and encourages other people to do the same, and you see people in the YouTube comments putting half their portfolio or even more into Tesla stock for a speculation, that is never a good idea. So if you really do believe in Tesla and you want to invest in them, you know, go for it. But all I'm saying is don't bet the whole farm on them because it's a good chance the returns aren't gonna be as great as every single person on YouTube is saying they're gonna be. That's it for this video. If you like the information, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I post videos like this all the time, multiple times a week. And with that, I'll see you on the next video.